Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today I decided to do something a little bit different. Uh, first of all, I apologize for this really super sketchy lighting. The apartment lighting is not the best, so I got a ring light. However, with my phone sideways like this, there's not really a good place to clip the ring light on, so it is what it is, but that's okay. It kind of matches our trying to do like a little spooky vibe that's why I uh, am not you know dolled up or anything and I got my jammies on and my blanket so I decided I wanted to do something kind of funny so the series that I wanted to sort of start and play around with um, I'm gonna call it the ice cream diaries because I'm gonna feature a different ice cream each time today it's Ben and Jerry's half-baked, um, which is kind of like the movie that I'm going to talk about today. I mean, it out of the container, but I can assure you I had a fat bowl before I started this video. <laughs> um, the movie that I wanted to talk about today... Mm, sorry, this half-baked fucking slaps. It's one of my favorite Ben & Jerry's flavors. And probably a lot of other people's too. Let's do some more uh, little background on the series that I wanted to do. Like I said, it's gonna be called the Ice Cream Diaries, where I feature a different ice cream every time I do it. And I'm gonna talk about something just spooky, creepy, scary. So today I'm going to be talking about the movie The Boy from 2016. Let me get into it, finally, after this five minute long introduction. First of all, I want to say welcome. And I so sincerely hope that it doesn't already exist. I would be so upset. Oh yeah, cranked up this ring light, baby. I really thought that making a YouTube channel would make me like put together really cute outfits and wear makeup more and have my hair done but here we are. So the movie The Boy came out in 2016. I remember like wanting to go see it. Um, it's so weird talking about things like pre-COVID now like I was gonna just go to a movie crazy so it's about this woman who her name is Greta she is fleeing an abusive relationship her ex-boyfriend fiance husband I really don't remember to tell you the 100% truth but anyways her man's beaten up on her and he is like also emotionally abusive and just manipulative and he's just bad character all around and she ends up in like a, I don't know if it's, it must be like rural. Um, she ends up in this English town, um, nannying. I, I still didn't catch how this happened. I think she was just trying to get as fucking far away from this dude as she could. Um, at least I think that was the whole backstory. So whatever, she ends up in England nannying for this couple. And... Sounds pretty legit, like, she's got to watch an eight-year-old year, eight boy, only the one kid, um, in this dope-ass house, like, this super fucking big, like, English manor. It's so beautiful, and it's so big, and it's, oh, lovely. Anyways, <clears throat> all she's got to do is babysit this boy, right? So she goes there, and... Immediately things are a little weird, but like, I don't know, when you go to new places, isn't it kind of weird for you too? So she kind of just writes these things off. And she meets this super handsome, like, delivery boy who drops off their mail and the groceries and stuff like that. And, um, immediate, like, this is not even a spoiler, but literally immediately right away you're like, oh, okay, so these two are gonna end up banging. So they end up being love interests for each other, um, even though he's kind of got to talk her into it. Classic. 
classic movie move. And they kind of just get to talking. She like asks about like, what's going on? What's the backstory here? Um, because, <laughs> so she meets the mom and dad, her bosses, right? The mom seems like a snooty bitch who she's like really super strict about the rules about taking care of this boy. And the dad seems a little more, a little bit more like chill about the whole thing. He's like, listen, I know this is weird as fuck. And I'm about to, well, I mean, I guess you probably already know the weird part. Like the boy is not a real child. He is a fucking doll who looks like the kid. So anyways, the dad's like, I know this is a little weird, but like, you know, man, our dude is just still with us, you know? Like, and this shit makes my wife happy. If, I'm paraphrasing, of course. But, like, he really just seems like he's there to, you know, make the wife happy or as happy as the two of them can be together 20 years after losing their little boy. So the story with the doll is that their little boy died, and I don't remember if it was a fire or... What happened? Oh, shoot, I wish I remembered. Uh, but regardless, that was about 20 years ago, which is kind of weird because the way this boy's dressed is not that of like a kid who died 20 years before 2016. And due to the English manner setting, I I just feel like they kind of, they were trying to do too much here. And that's a theme that I think sticks with kind of the whole movie like what's the setting yeah okay we know it's England but like what the fuck is the time frame here because the little boy the doll fucking seems like he's from like the early 1900s and the I can't I guess I can't really tell because I don't know what like really rich British people dress like but these people are like really just reserved um very old-fashioned it seems like but all the other characters seem to be in like modern dress. So I don't really know what's going on there. Like I said, I think they just try to take, you know, there's there's too much going on. Typical of movies, there's like storylines within the storylines, but it just wasn't, none of it was like married together well for me in this movie. I don't really think there's anyone like noteworthy in this film. Um, I did recognize the dad from somewhere, so I just like Google searched him, and he is in a bunch of like big name stuff, but he wasn't a big character in really any of it. And um, I did Google the uh, delivery boy just because I thought he was like super cute, but I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what else he starred in. So, anyways, to take care of this boy. This chick's just got to like follow these rules set by the parents, which is typical really of any babysitting job. Like I was doing that shit when I was 12. Um, so she has to like sing to him and wake him up at X time every day. And you know, he likes certain foods or he's picky or whatever, which this is all, she's all like, what the fuck is going on here? Cause again, it's a doll, like, but they, they treat him and keep him like as if he's a real boy. So she gets just wrapped into this whole big mess. And she starts noticing like this kind of weird stuff because once the parents leave for their vacation, she she just notices stuff that like she's like, oh my god, I must be like going crazy. This this doll is doing stuff. So she starts like setting up scenarios to kind of like prove it, I guess, to the delivery boy. She, so she goes to take a shower because she's got a date with the cute delivery boy and she goes in there like she comes out and like all her shit's missing and then she gets trapped in a fucking in the attic by this boy. So when the parents leave they're like follow these rules treat our boy right and he'll treat you right don't treat him according to these rules and he, like bad shit's coming to you like they fucking they told her she knew so she starts kind of like ignoring this stuff because he's a fucking doll so she sets up a day with the cute delivery boy and 
that's clearly not part of the rules. And she's throwing them all over the place, like fucking tossing them and stuff, which first of all, rude. Because like, <laughs> regardless of the fact that that's not a child, like that's somebody's fucking like prized and treasured property. So where it kind of starts to get to be too much with me outside of the time frame question mark is the whole thing like is kind of confusing because to me the movie tries to take too many different directions and I get that that's to like really get you with the plot twists at the end so it's like are we the viewers supposed to think that it's really this doll doing this is it a spirit some type of other force like we don't know she doesn't know but we also are inclined to think like man this fucking doll is doing it or like spirits or you know whatever and I just feel like the thing that sucked about this movie was like I said I remember like when it came out I was like excited to see it because I was like man you know this seems like a pretty cool premise for a movie and honestly it is like it's I don't know it's a little bit different in that like I don't know she has to like take care of this doll who's not really a real person or whatever it's just this movie wasn't like groundbreaking in any way so they went the doll direction they went um I don't want to spoil it for you but they went a really creepy direction that I've seen done better in other movies like the big plot twist at the end it did surprise me I will definitely give them that but if I I mean if I was better at like seeing foreshadowing it would not have surprised me and then like you think back about it and you're like oh my god of course but anyways they like the main thing that's the plot twist like I said I've seen it done before and I've seen it done way better and I've seen dolls done way better more in more like prolific ways I guess I don't know this movie was okay like I'm not I wasn't mad that I spent you know an hour and a half watching it but it definitely was not anything super special that I would be like excited to watch again would I watch it again yeah sure but I wouldn't like super recommend it like I wouldn't be like bro the boy is my new favorite movie of all time like never ever I don't think anyone's saying that about this film to be honest however I don't know really anything about movie budgets although I did just really quickly read that the budget I think was 10 million the box office brought in like 62 million so I mean they still made a profit I don't know what like average movie sale numbers are though I have no idea so I'm not gonna spoil the main plot twist but I will say that the abusive boyfriend finds her. I think it's this lady's like niece or nephew or something. Um, I believe it's her sister's kid who just like straight up tells this dude this woman's address. Like <laughs> this kid's a fucking snitch boy for real. Um, Cause like I wouldn't the kid like know why she fucking ran away all the way to England from fucking who knows where some small town hick place so the boyfriend shows up which to me honestly was the scariest part because although I was never in a physically abusive relationship I've been in like emotionally abusive and verbally abusive relationships with you know manipulative narcissists and seeing that character like I don't know for me that was the scariest part hashtag trauma but this happens at like almost the same exact time as the big plot twist happens I understand that it was for like the like climax but I don't know I just felt like they could have taken so they took so many routes here they all just felt kind of really half-assed to me like the abusive boyfriend trope Psh, everybody's done it and everybody's done it better like what is it it's like a Halle Berry movie and fucking J-Lo I think Sandra Bullock does one like they all it's just all been done and I know that at this point there's not like huge creativity um 
that you can really have with movies because it seems like everything's been done. But I don't know. I just... It was okay. It was an okay movie. Like I said, the plot twist did get me. And the delivery boy was cute, so I'll watch it again for that. Maybe I would watch it again just to pick up on like little small details or like foreshadowing that I didn't catch the first time around. But other than that, child, I thought I was being watched. <laughs> but other than that, The Boy was a pretty okay film. I would give it six fudge brownie chunks out of 10. Six and a half, because the cute delivery boy. Anyways, thanks very much for tuning in and hopefully dealing with my shitty lighting. I'll figure something out. My ring light's definitely dying. But also that's on me, because I didn't plug it in first, so, oof. Um. Thanks for your patience with me while I figure out YouTube, because this shit, it's, it's not that it's hard, but like doing it well is, is kind of hard. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you are willing to work with my shortcomings because you think I'm funny and like who I am as a person. Please tell me you like me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hashtag I need validation. I don't know, but I do have plenty of hopefully cool and fun ideas. I think they're cool and fun. I just am hoping that you do too. So again, thank you for staying tuned. And uh, if you haven't already, maybe check out some of my other videos or subscribe so that you don't miss a future video. Have a good night. Bye.